Okay, I'm gonna paint a quick shape that I can turn into different colors of metal. And so we'll just start with black and white once again, get the form in place. Let's put a pitcher in here. We're gonna put the face of the pitcher here. You know, we'll make like a tea kettle kind of a thing. Downward facing angles. I'm gonna make darker suggesting that there's light coming more from above than from below. So like I talked about in the last video on this subject, we're really just building a reflection from the form shadows. So form shadows are just, just the generally lighter and darker values that show us the three-dimensional shape they can be very simple it seems to be the case that form shadows and reflection are really just the same thing we have a cast shadow a real cast shadow from my finger on on this board right now and so if i move my hand the right way you can see that going across my picture that's a cast shadow and you know that's projected onto one object from another object that's not what the kind of shadow that I'm talking about. <laughs> For that matter, we could call them form lights rather than shadows. They could be highlights or shadows, however you want to think of it. But they come from how bright the environment is that the surface is facing. The form shadows just give us the quick 3D creation of the shape, nothing too fancy. So I'm gonna put a spout coming off of my kettle. Maybe like that. Let's go up like this and down like this and attach it to that wide spot right there. How about that? And then we'll go white on the top, lighter color up here because it's facing more upward, I'll leave that dark like it's the underside of the handle and then I'll lighten it again right here where it's facing more, more up. Okay, we got it. We've got our form. This is the form of our object, not intended to look metallic. It's just the three-dimensional form and we can add all kinds of different effects to that. This uh, combination of lights and shadows is just a blurry reflection. That's all it is. Wherever this is facing toward more lights than, than shadows, it's a lighter color. Wherever it's facing toward more shadows than lights, it really is just the average of all of those. And so let's say the light is, there's two lights. Let's say there's a couple of them. It's brighter here and here. Let's put pure white right in that one little spot. I'll put a gradient in here of this getting gradually darker as it moves away from that light. That would be more like a real environment. So we're gonna start boosting up the contrast to get it to look more metallic. We'll put some lighter things down here, some darker, but the average of it, the average of this is darker than the top. And that's why the lower part of this picture was dark in the first place, because it's really just a blurry reflection. Now, we're going to add color to this, but I just want to show that the metallic effect is related very much just to the lightness and darkness, to the values. Okay, before I add color, we can make this a smooth finish now. The sharper I make these edges, the more this is going to look like a, a smooth mirror finish. You know, we can just make smooth edges like this. But those edges are not solid colors. Those edges are reflections of objects. So they're gonna have uh, all kinds of different values inside of them. Who knows where? I don't know. This could be reflecting all kinds of different objects. And then wherever we have our uh, curving around an edge, we scrunch lots of reflections together, lots of values together. What it does as it's curving around the edges, it's collecting the reflection from many places and putting them all on that little strip. So it all gets squished, squished into little stripes. So it's important that you don't have solid colors going all the way to the very edge of your object. We're going to make this chrome, you know, 
make it a silver metal, but but we're not necessarily painting a colorless picture because chrome, like a mirror, is going to reflect colors. So I'm going to start putting colors in here. If it's inside of a house or or I don't know, just some interior setting, it might have some uh, brown color. There's just just uh, so many brown things so so let's make a real grayish shade of brown and we're gonna put this in the reflection somewhere you know we'll, we'll put it kind of on this edge there's a place for some brown let's put a brown object there let's put some here let's do something a little more gold you know I think that that's just really common color scheme here we are we got some color in our environment and then let's say we have some colors in the light as well. Let's not just make it a gray light. Let's say that it has just a touch of gold color to it. Let's get some orange, yellow, and put it on our bright area. And maybe this is sitting on a table. All right, let's put the bright light, put some lighter colors here because this is our, our lighter upper half. We've got some grays, we've got some golds, we got some browns. Let's get some of these. We'll put more of these brown colors on the underside right here. Let's throw in a little bit of black with that for some contrast. So you can actually use a lot of color when doing a gray metal because it's, it's just creating a more gray version of the environment. It reflects like a mirror and creates this uh, this gray tinted version of the environment. So it's nothing too fancy. You're taking all the principles of, of the uh, previous video where we're just sharpening the edges, we're uh, raising the contrast, adding the gradients in the light and shadow, something that's real common to see is blue in the highlights because we're under a blue sky so no matter what I have on my background it'll probably look pretty ordinary to put some blue in my highlights and I don't think I want like a turquoise blue let's make it a little bit on the purple side and I don't want it to be real vivid so I'm gonna add black to the white to make it more gray so when you put that in the highlights like this, we are so accustomed to seeing a chrome fender on a car, for example, reflecting the sky above that, that this is a very familiar sight. A sky is very gradient, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not, I'm going to avoid having solid solid colors and then another thing about a sky is is uh, if this is a reflection of the sky then we'll probably have a lighter horizon on the sky so we go like that either way we see the gradients inside of our light and shadow areas and those gradients give us a feeling of reflection rather than mere light and shadow there we go let's put a big a big sun glow in here. Let's put a real nice, I'm gonna add some orange in there to make it look like the sun is in the sky and it's coming down and lighten up a few things in the sky as it illuminates this. I'm just painting a landscape inside of my, my now silver picture. Let's put that right there. Who knows what those other lights are from. Maybe the light's bouncing off of something. I don't know. And then if that's the case, that we're outside now, we might expect to see a little bit brighter colors in some of these ground reflections. It's common to see, see some sunlit ground with that as well. So maybe I brighten up some of these where it's facing down at the sunlit, sunlit ground. But I don't want to lose my high contrast. We still have the contrast of... of real uh, lights and shadows reflecting the image is reflecting in there like like this sunlit dirt on the ground if I'm trying to get a exterior scene now this is facing down towards some sunlit 
ground, perhaps. It gets darker as it faces straight toward me. The, you know, I'm just the bystander admiring this object that's sitting here out on this picnic table. <laughs> now, if this were sitting on a picnic table somewhere, you might have trees around. Let's go ahead and put some green in there for some trees. Black and yellow will give me kind of a earthy green. We can come up here and just put some skinny lines. If there's tall trees that are out to the side, they're going to get squished, squished, squished on the edge. And then more distant trees are going to go lower, just like they do in a landscape, like this. As they go back toward the horizon end, they'll get less colorful because they're getting further away in the reflection. So it's a big help just to understand that we're painting a landscape in here. So we can have fun uh, putting whatever colors you want to put in there. Just remember that they're all mixed with the color of the, of the metal and they get smashed as they go around edges like, like these. They, you get lots and lots of color differences on, on edges. So here, I, it doesn't matter if I keep track of what those colors are coming from. That's not really going to be what gives me my, my look in the end. That, that look of reflection is just going to come from seeing this pattern of more and more colors being, you know, side by side by side around those edges. And so on the edge of this handle is one place I might expect to see many little lines of different objects reflecting. Okay, now to turn this to gold, I'm going to use orange and I'm going to use yellow and then just black and white. So these are just just wall paints, just acrylic, latex wall paints. They're the best, they work great. Put my black and white over here and I won't need blue because anything bluish that reflects in gold probably be more like a, a gray. Now the rule with metal is uh, it's very similar to translucent material actually, which I find very interesting because we think of metal as anything but translucent. The darker colors are the furthest from yellow in the color scheme. All of these colors, I'll mostly use my orange. Here's more orange. And just like the reflection before, there's no right shape to put in here. I don't have any background established. So it doesn't matter too much what shapes I put in here. I'm following the same, same rules, uh, same principles as before with the values. I'll put some brighter color in here. Let me empty out my brush just so uh, I don't get too much of my black mixed with the yellow. It turns very green, but that's easy to fix. If it does turn green, we can just add orange, no problem. So let's see, when yellow mixes with the dark colors, it, it may want to may wanna turn green. Okay, here's some brighter value uh, within my shadow. Like translucent objects, in a metal, we'll shift toward yellow in the bright reflections and away from yellow as they get darker. And you can watch many, many videos where I've talked about this pattern. This is definitely not the first place. But it's a subtle pattern. That's, that's not going to make or break the effect, that shifting toward yellow. It, you know, it, uh, it really helps. Now what's most important this is the most important thing when adding the color the bright colors are the saturated colors what is unlike other translucent things is that this is most saturated in the bright colors and we lose color intensity as we get darker right from the the top brightest color we start losing intensity as we get into the shadows. That is the very important part. That's what gives it a metallic effect is that I'm, I'm putting my sky in here. I'm going to put my real bright sun. Notice that I'm using a lot of yellow and, and orange, you know, whatever color. It, it doesn't have to be any exact color to look like metal. 
but I've got a lot of color in this bright area. So you don't want to go too light if you're trying to get a, a vivid metallic look. If you add too much white to it, then you don't have this effect of having color in your highlights. You need color in the highlights. Okay, let's put some orange in here. I don't know what object this might be. It's, it's just something in the middle. Maybe those trees <laughs> they were there before here. Let's put some skinny shapes near the edge. The values are getting darker, so I bend them a little toward orange. Now this does depend a lot on what color the object is that's being reflected, but because this is a common pattern, it's reliable. It'll deliver good results. I don't have to uh, think real hard about what is being reflected. I can just use some believable colors and be done with it. Oh, we can totally put some green in there. Let's do it. Let's put yellow. But it's not going to be super green. It's going to be slightly green. Yellow and black will be a great color for that. Here, let's put our campsite reflection in there. We're camping out. We got a gold pitcher on the table because we're glamping. <laughs> I'm going to put some green trees in there. Okay, they're going to be real squishy trees over here on the edge. And then they're going to open up to wider shapes as they approach the face of the of the picture. By the way, the reason, you know, maybe another way to explain this squishing effect is that, you know, we're looking at a curved surface. And so if we're looking this direction right here, then we're going to see in an area that is this wide, there's an amount of angle change there, and that is collecting reflections from these different angles. According to where we're viewing and where those things are, we see a reflection. Well, that same amount of angle change over here is going to happen. Let's go the same distance, same amount of angle change. It's here. So if we draw our line down, let me get a little water on my brush. If we, if we go over here, you know, to, to somewhere right in here, and then we draw a line going the same direction, you can see that it got narrower here. And then if we keep going, that same amount of angle change now is just a skinny, skinny, skinny little spot right there. So as we're looking this direction, the number of objects being reflected depends on the number of angles. Or maybe I should say the percentage of the environment that's in an area depends on the number of angles. A full half circle will collect everything, everything from the far left to the far right. That's why I can say that this skinny little line is a tree because that tree is squished really skinny because it's one part of an environment that's getting really smashed on the edge of, of our view. The trees might appear upside down as the curve inverts. So this could be an upside down tree. You know, if you've ever looked at your reflection in a spoon, you can see it reversed both directions because it curves both vertically and horizontally. Okay, those are trees. And uh, maybe up here is the ground. Maybe this is facing downward enough to grab a little bit of our orange colored dirt. Let's put some in there. Same thing here, some dirt color. All right, now I'm, I'm just gonna try to clean it up from here on out using this, using this method of keeping my saturated bright colors. Yellower where they're brighter, just more. It's, it doesn't have to be anything extreme. And then as we get darker, we are doing both of these things, moving it away from the yellow, more toward the orange, and taking down the intensity of the color because a reflection of an environment of lights and the color comes from the light, so the most colorful areas will therefore be the where the light source is being reflected. Okay, so it gets more orange as it gets darker. We start seeing dark shadows. I don't know what objects, they're just stripes. This is all they are, just stripes on the edge.
but the reason they have the effect I'm looking for is because it's a familiar pattern. Now I can put a little gray in there too. If I want to reflect a blue sky, I just think I get more of a, a vivid gold effect if I don't put the blue sky in it. But, but uh, I can, you know, and it'll just be more of a gray highlight in this bright, bright yellow area. But if we were reflecting maybe a sunset environment, then it would be so gold. So I'd be, I'd be right on in my colors for that effect. Just, just depends what's being reflected. I'm getting some diverse colors because my brush is just mixing with other, other colors. Uh, you know, I've got more black and white in some of these strokes. I've got more green in others. Lots of bold contrast. This is where I really think it shines is when you get the heavy contrast. If this is reflecting a, a darker shadow down low, we can get real orange. I care more about the presence of a convincing pattern than making sure that every stroke is, is right. You know, it, we, once, once we have believability, we can get away with all kinds of little anomalies and exceptions to the pattern. I just need to you know, get that initial overlying pattern so that as a whole it, it has, has distinctly that look. I'm getting a good balance of color change with the value changes. Generally more of an orange seen here, losing intensity as it gets darker, not gaining intensity. It quickly starts to look like, like a gold balloon with light shining through if I get too much color in the shadows. There's the lid. Now let's do this part. Get a gradient of skylight perhaps. Maybe room light. Maybe it's just the light on the ceiling fan in a living room. I've pretty much got it all in place now, but I'm going to toy around with the colors and uh, just see what kind of fun things I might be able to do with the reflection here. Maybe put a, a little bit of light shining on some more objects. You know, it, it seems like I'm a little bit, a little bit boring on my colors. You can put all kinds of colors in there, so might as well. It's very orange. It may be that my change was a bit extreme, you know, going from very yellow to very orange. And these two colors are, are not close. This is a probably on the red side of orange, so I don't think I need to change so much as I get to the darker colors. But it's <clears throat> really dependent on the color of the objects being reflected. Might be fun to try a blue sky, let's try it. So like I was saying, blue sky will be gray. So when a gray-blue filters to a gray-yellow, well blue, blue and yellow are opposite colors. So we're going to end up with a very gray result. So let's put gray in here and just say that it's a blue sky reflecting in our scene. But I'll keep my bright gold sun because it's bright. It's a light source that has that color. So the sun is, is, not, is not blue. So I'm going to put my yellow color where I have the sun. You just got to make sure that it's nice and bright. So we have to make the whole picture dark enough. I can't stress that enough. The whole picture has to be dark enough that you can keep color in your lights. If you can't get color in your light sources, then it may be because your whole picture is just too dark. We need to be able to have that color because that's what really gives us this distinct metallic glow is that we see color coming from the light just like in a real landscape. And then maybe just because it's such a reliable, good effect, I'll outline it with something more gray. So we'll go back to the black and white. We'll make a very gray yellow, gray gold, whatever you want to call it. And let's get a touch more orange in there and just go around the edge. 
like it's a reflection of the background. I don't want to put any one color going too far because that's just not a not much of a not a common environment look you know when there's a whole environment it's real diverse there's different colors everywhere so when that all gets scrunched into tiny space you see it you see that diversity so just different different shades everywhere scrunched scrunched more on the edges that's the that's the key so let's have some fun let's make this in different colors let's make part of our picture green let's make some green metal let's shift the green toward yellow where it's brighter move it a little more toward the toward the green where it's darker just a little shift we move toward the yellow where it gets brighter uh, let's go up here and what should we make green I don't know what to make green on this let's let's put a green patch right in here let's make this part of it green we're gonna do this to maintain our look of metal we need to make sure we have color intensity where it's bright the bright lights are what give us the color in a metallic reflection just like a mirror and we lose color when we lose light seems like common sense doesn't it so I'll add a little bit of black down here so that I'm losing intensity where it gets darker this is a really intense color so so we can add probably quite a bit of gray to it and still have a lot of color and then of course the unexpected gradients as I've called them the different values of the environment are still there I can add orange to it I can add environment colors let's see what happens if we add some orange it's gonna be a brownish gray color there and uh, this will be really interesting to see I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it merge with with the uh, gold color scheme so that it still looks like one multicolored metal picture now if it's a blue sky like we were doing uh, blue mixed with green in natural light doesn't produce such a brilliant turquoise so i'm going to kill the intensity of that just a touch by putting some a uh, little bit of black and white so here's some gray i'll still have like a pale a grayish turquoise a grayish blue green so that gray will look more like natural light mixing in more metallic as it's getting darker away from the light source it's less yellow it's less intense as well city intensity meaning color saturation how colorful reflecting there all right we got a green zone we have the we have the metallic look darker as it moves away from the light losing color intensity not bad why don't we move to magenta you never see magenta metal <laughs> I shouldn't say never but how about up here by the lid how about this area will be my magenta and I'll make it going off into the handle like this dark colors here I can almost just glaze magenta over what's already there and the and the values it adds color to the values that are you know, I almost don't even have to do any work but I will to make it look better that is how you know artificial gold you know like cheap gold door knobs and little little pieces of hardware you make them gold by putting a yellow film over a chrome so I, I'm kind of just doing that. I'm making this like a pink metal by just putting that magenta film over it. So on this magenta, to shift toward yellow, I need to use a more orange color. And I want it to be like a soft, a gradual change. And then I need some more purpley colors 
but not too intense. We'll put black and white in it. There we go. Boy, this is like trying to paint a seamless color wheel in my metal object here. I think my purple was a little, little too excited. I, I got excited about the purple and I think I made it a bit too extreme. I'm gonna go more pink. It has the blue sky reflecting, but you know, this is a metallic. I need to really, really keep that bright color of the metal. I just, I just went too far, too much blue. So we're gonna go more pink where it's reflecting the sky here. We go purple. Let's do purple. Okay, we want it to be bright where it faces up. So let's grab some white. So purple is, is a very opposite, a yellow. So going toward yellow with the purple could be moving toward the blue, could be moving toward the red. I don't know which way to go. You can do either. You decide. Or you could just go toward both, which means lighter and that's all. Just lighter purple. But I do want to make sure that I have increasing color saturation in the light. So I can't go too light with the purple. If I go too light, uh, I'll lose color intensity and it won't have that metallic shine to it anymore. So where I go darker, I'll... Well, I can go very light, but I have to make sure I lose that saturation as I darken it. So that's where the black comes in handy. Let's put some blue in. That'll be fun. We already got it mixed on the palette. Let's put blue. Here. Let's get a real nice blue. After all, we have sky in our picture. We don't have a lot of blue in there. Let's do some blue metal. blue right there and we're gonna put our intense blue right across the middle right there we'll shift it to a purple if it's moving toward yellow as it gets brighter then that's gonna make my blue a little more green so this particular blue already is kind of turquoise it has that little bit of green hue as I lighten it so I'll just add purple to my dark blue, same thing. There's our blue metal. Now I'm gonna go black and white because as blue moves toward a yellow, I wanna blend this in nice, it's gonna turn more gray. 